Josh Johnson show. Josh Johnson joined by my co-host, fellow stand-up comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Doing all right. <laughs> That's fine. I'm doing well, man. How are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I am doing. I am here and I am alive. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so, and this is not, you know, I understand this isn't going to resonate with a lot of people, but have you ever, <laughs> one second, sorry, have you ever been through a, um, like a major storm? Oh, yeah. Okay, what what were some of the major storms that you went through in uh, in life so far? Do you remember them by name? No, because the ones we get in the Midwest don't get names because they just happen a lot. You just get tornadoes and you get blizzards. Um, there was the, in Chicago, the polar vortex. That was a big one because that was where it was like like crazy cold. Like a lot of snow, but also like the coldest it had like ever been mm -hmm. in like 100 years or some shit. But so that's the only one that had a name. But otherwise, out here, it's just like... Reason to get in basement is what you that's <laughs> what you get around here. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> I just I feel like they can't know that stuff. They can't what do know you mean? it's like the worst storm in a hundred years and it hasn't been this cold. It's like whenever they say that, I'm like, what are you what are you going by? Like I understand records. they have they have records. Yeah, but I'm telling you, man, there's just I don't really trust our Doppler Numbers. radar okay. against okay. like someone who was just using like a regular mercury thermometer back in 1902. Well, they don't always go with that. But I mean, I mean, thermometers haven't really changed in how they work. So if it's like, if it reads negative seven, it's negative seven. Like that's not, no, just because no. it's digital doesn't mean it's different. I understand, but you can't tell me that the first thermometer that somebody made, mm -hmm. they thought to right. go negative. Well, <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? I, that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that like when you, when I looked yes, at thermometers also keep in when mind, I was a kid, it started at yeah. zero. I never saw okay. it go backwards. Sure, but where I mean, also the question is, we're using a Celsius thermometer because that's different too. Yeah, but they still tell us in Fahrenheit. Right, I know, but I'm just I'm saying it would make sense if your 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 thermometer ended at zero if it was Celsius because that'd be freezing. In, yeah, in Celsius, you know. Yeah. I listen. I understand the point you're trying to make. You're an idiot, but <laughs> no, no, this, you do this all the time. Whenever I'm like, whenever I'm like on to something, you're like, <laughs> yo, your, you are your not on to something. Your thing is dumb, but no, no, I somehow no, no. don't have a rebuttal. <laughs> because my rebuttal would be the boring nature of just getting into how the like weather records are kept. I used to work in TV news, so I worked mm -hmm. with like meteorologists and stuff too. I understand, Part of why yeah. they always say it's our worst storm in a hundred years because that's where our records go back to. It's not because they're like, oh, definitely this is the one. It's just that's like they've been keeping those meteorological records since that time. Yes, predictions have gotten different, but they can, after the fact, they know how to, like measuring how a storm affected after the fact hasn't changed much. I'm like, there is other stuff, but like they know uh, like, oh, if per like precipitation, that way of measuring has existed for a long time. I'm totally, I'm totally with you. Sure. I'm just saying, I'm not uh -huh. even talking about predictions. I'm talking about like when they say, oh uh -huh. man, nothing is, nothing is hit this hard in like 200 years or whatever. Even yeah. the records, I'm, I'm just saying the records were kept in a way that was poorer than what we do now. So then I'm like, okay, now this being the worst storm in 200 years, the record is the record from someone being like, well, this barn got blown clean off. So like, this is the worst storm I've ever seen. And then you track that no, all the way that down to like present day where it's like, oh yeah, it knocked over a cement building. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't measure storms by building. Hey, hey, you don't know what they were doing back then, all right? <laughs> yes, we do we have the records of how they measured. No, 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 the records, okay. <laughs> see, see, and then this is what you do. When I have valid points, you just go, nah. 
and repeat what I say. I don't go, but in nah, a dumb go, guy nah, voice. Nah, nah, nah. You go, you go, nah, nah, nah. Ooh, a building. Like that's how you, <laughs> that's how you respond, and you always act like that's a valid rebuttal. A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> You're a confident fool. That's what you are. No, you are the fool. All right? You're the fucking fool. You are a fool. Okay? You are a goddamn fool. Remember that. All right? Before you go to sleep tonight, remember, I'm a fool. Before your eyes I, close. I think it every time I sign on to these calls. I'm, a fool. I'm like, this is what I've done. This is what I've chosen to do with my life. You are a fool. You're a fucking fool. You fool. <laughs> Remember that. So anyway, the whole reason I bring it up is because <laughs> there was this store. Let me see. I think it was Kansas. There was a store that hit Kansas really bad. This is and and this like recently. No, no, no. This is years ago. Okay, but I was, I was gonna say if it, like, if it like just happened, uh, cut in this part because this just seems rude. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just hear me out. So basically, the okay. storm hit Kansas, right? Yeah. And, but <laughs> you know how when you're little and your your mom will take you with her to the hairdresser or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So this this is a thing that I. <laughs> <laughs> I remember from when my mom took me to the salon with her and all these women were talking and stuff like that. And I'm just there's nothing to do but read magazines that I also don't care about. Like the mm. magazines at the salon would have like maybe a Teen Vogue once in a while. And I could see what Avril Lavigne was up to. But outside of that, right. it was who was like, you know, who was leaving who for who in Hollywood and all the stuff that I mm. just at like eight. You know, I didn't care about. But I remember this this story that this woman under the dryer was telling. And I remember because she was telling it loud as hell uh, because mm -hmm. a lot because, you know, you can't hear yourself as well when you're under the right. dryer. And <laughs> there was this storm that was happening in like Kansas or something. It was really bad. It was like, make you know, make national news bad. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And. <laughs> This guy was supposed to be in Kansas on business, okay? Mm -hmm. And his wife, so they don't live in Kansas. They live in some other state. But his wife sees the storm because the storm happened, like, truly out of nowhere. Like, I'm pretty sure it was a tornado, just, but it, like, there was really no warning. It wasn't, like, something that had been building or, like, the fronts were looking like it was going to develop or something. It was just came and went in, like, mm -hmm. a matter of several hours, you know? Right. And so that night when the storm was hitting and it was like making the news that this thing was happening, his wife was calling, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, the next day she can finally get a hold of him and she's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, babe, I'm fine. You know, what, what's, the, what's the problem? And this thing, this storm happening and him being fine and not knowing what she was talking about is how he got caught with another family. This dude had uh, another family. So another secret family. Another secret family. And this is also my first. I had, like, a, I'm, I had a feeling. I don't want to call it out. I'm just like this story ends with affair or secret family. Yeah. That's where a lot of these, a lot of these, <laughs> these stories end. A lot of these people not being in danger usually with another family, and then they're in yeah. danger when they get home. But they're in danger. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, I remember her like yeah like yelling this story right uh and i i don't know why it caught my attention but i was just kind of like oh that's that's like something you know i didn't know what cheating was back then i didn't know i didn't know what any <laughs> any of the like things were. yeah but i was just like the way that the way that she had captivated the salon i was right, like yeah. all right this story clearly means something you know yeah there's something good in this. Yeah. 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 No, I feel that. And then, and then, you know, as I got older, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> secret family. Oh, secret families. That's good stories. I'm going to make a podcast out of that. Yeah. You really can't have them like you used to. You know, really can't We've be. We've talked about that. No, We're I know. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm surprised when anyone, I just saw, I didn't read the whole story, but it was a news headline. That it was a guy, uh, they had found a dead body like in a store or something like that. I can't remember what the, the detail was. 
And then they identified the body, and it was the body of a guy who had faked his own death to, to disappear from his family like 10 years earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw that when I was just like, man, it's hard to fake your own death and disappear too these days. Like that's- Yeah. Yeah. It, not, only, not only that, do you remember that Runaway Bride from like 2000? <laughs> and five. oh vaguely vaguely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like and we we were all that was the most missing a white woman has ever been like that was <laughs> <laughs> that was truly wild because i remember i it must have been her family that paid for that billboard but they did something initially that was big i remember because they used to always cut to the billboard when they would do the story yeah. And it was it was truly wild. And then and then when they were like, "Oh, she's been fa-, like she essentially gone girled herself." But it was cuz she got right. cold feet for her wedding, I think. Or at least that's what like the the prevailing narrative became. Right, yeah. Yeah, I do. oh, I yeah, I vaguely remember that story. But I do, yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's not it's not easy. It's not easy to to fake your own death, have that secret family anymore. The good old days are over. It's also like you, such... You'll just say, oops, I'm dead. Just leave, you know, a, a, a pile of rubble somewhere and then go to the town over and go, I'm Brian here. I got to... You'll be able to do it that way. I got to look up the... <laughs> when did Runaway Bride come out? The movie would have came out... Late nineties or like two thousand one or two or something like that. Because people kept like people start calling her the runaway bride, you know, because right. like once they found out the whole thing. But it's yeah. like you can't you can't not want to marry this dude that bad. Like it like it was one of those things where, okay, but you could at least let your family know you're all right. Yeah. Or like somehow Like just call your mama is all I'm saying. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> or the or the life you're running away from is already a, a, a second life. You know what I mean? Like, like it's like they were getting That's married, so and then yeah. the invitation from that got to one of the people who they're in witness protection from, <laughs> and it's just now it's now it's just a mess. Now it's just a string of runaways. Mm. I did think of another while you're looking that up. I thought of another storm. Mm-hmm. I I I think I think I just gotten back to Iowa. Oh no! Yeah, I was here. I lived here with with Jess when it happened. But there was a storm. It was called like the Derecho or Derecho a couple years ago in Iowa. That is like it's not a tornado, and it's not technically it's not any other type of storm. It's literally just really really hard winds happen at an instant and just level shit. Like you want to talk about barns getting knocked over like that, like fucked up Iowa. It's like a national emergency mm-hmm. too. And like that was one of those things where like I didn't know that could happen. Like that was it was alarming to be like, oh my god, my state getting hit so hard, and then also being like, wind can just do that out of nowhere mm-hmm. in the middle of the country because it's like hurricane force winds just suddenly. And I'm like, I don't like, I don't care for that shit at all. No, thank you. No, thank you, Mother Nature. Yeah, no, it's bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thanks for thanks for that drop. In. No, I'm just saying. It's like the way, even the way that you were describing. It, I was like, yeah, I don't know what I would do. Like, I, like I'm not, I'm yeah. not. Like when I saw the movie Twister, I was like, oh, that's not gonna be me. But at least you can like see those coming in the sky. You know, you can see Twisters mm-hmm. beginning. Like these, the Derechos or Derecho. I, f- I forget how they pronounced it. Like that. Because one of my favorite things about being in a landlocked part of the country, you know, in the middle here, is we don't have hurricanes. And then I was like, shit, we can get hurricanes? I didn't know that. I didn't know we could just get that now. <laughs> it is like, yeah. What what do you call it? Is it is it the boom cyclone when it's like a tornado of snow? I'm not sure what that's called. Snow, snow clone. I'm sorry that I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I found it. So, Runaway Bride came out in 1999. Um, okay. Then I said late 90s. I did say late. 90s. This Runaway Bride was in 2005. So, still when you nailed that though. You said 05. Yeah. This is this is this wild. Stuck with you. <laughs> yeah. 
It really <laughs> did because it's like, I, okay, this is dumb. This part is dumb. I can admit this sure. is dumb. But when I was a kid, I'd hear and see so many things like this that I thought, I thought there were way more people. I thought there was an epidemic of people faking deaths in this country. Like <laughs> you would just, you would see a couple of these a year, like a couple of these runaway bride things a year in different formats. Like whether it was like a dude pretending he died right. for the insurance money and trying to collect sure, it or whatever. Sure. And so you'd see it so much that in my head, I was like, man, nobody really out here dying. Like, I, for a second, I thought you just meant like anybody that went missing, you assumed were faking their death or faking their disappearance. No, no. I'm just... Like you see a milk carton with a kid on it, you're just like, man, he had some responsibilities. He was yeah, he didn't do his homework. <laughs> he, he was like, I'm not doing this physics stuff. I'm out. <laughs> no, I'm just going to start fresh somewhere else. I'm just going to move to another town and say I'm just a short guy. Oh... She didn't fake being missing. She fake being kidnapped. Ooh, that's even better. Let me see. Okay, one second. Yeah, yeah. Let's dig into this. Let's dig into this. <laughs> this late breaking news story from two thousand five. Yeah. Okay. Well, it says so. Her name. We're is talking twisters and runaway brides, and it's not a nineties movie roundup. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, her name is Jennifer Wilbanks, and her husband Greg Hudson split in April after eleven years together. Um, and Damn. this is from 2000. Oh, this is from last year. Um, it was supposed to be a lavish wedding with 28 members of the bridal party. And wait, what do you, than, wait, what do you mean it was from last year? What do you mean? By this that? article's from last year. Oh, this is just like a recapping of the story. Yeah. Yeah. This recap is from oh, okay, last year. Okay. So right now gotcha. I'm, I'm reading, uh, from people.com. Oh, reputable news. Source. Yeah. Yeah. Just shout out to people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> casting the widest net <laughs> in news. Yeah. Oh, we cover people. Oh, she only oh, she was only out for like three days. That's that's insane. Let me see. Okay. All right. We mean out for three days. So she I think this whole thing happened within a week. Mm. This wasn't like a weeks long search for didn't her. overstay its welcome. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go. it was supposed to be a lavish wedding with 28 members of the bridal party and more than 600 guests. But just Did you say 28 members of the bridal party? Yeah. Hey, this is a message to everyone out there. Don't fucking do that. Have like four. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But look, that shit's every bridal party. I'll tell you right now. Look, look. I'll tell you to the camera. Don't listen to Logan. All right. Have enough members in your bridal party to jump them in a gang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be part of the brow part and you got to get jumped saying. in, okay? 28 members. That's just, that's a family. Just have a family. Uh, I don't know. But just. It, it probably it probably means more than just groomsmen and bridesmaids. It's probably just like whoever else. They're like, well, we got to give, you know, cousin Sophia needs something to do. Otherwise, she's going to cause a fucking thing all day. So. Yeah. She's going to pout. Someone tried to put me as a, because they felt bad not making me a groomsman. They wanted to put me in as honored guest. And I said, do not do that. Because that makes no goddamn sense. That is for that is, honor. If you do one, I've never heard of that before. And if you do that, I better be an a hundred year old man who lived through three wars. Yeah, if you're, I gotta be someone they're surprised is there. Mm, if you out here making me an honored guest, we will be enemies after that. Yes, <laughs> uh, I can't just be some guy. Just days before the April 2005 nuptials, the bride vanished without a trace, sparking a nationwide manhunt. Her See, you notice how it wasn't a search. It was a manhunt. Yeah. Her distraught <laughs> family made the rounds on morning news shows and cable networks pleading for her return and saying that oh. she wasn't the type of person to run off. But they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> people people knows how to like tell a story because what people will do is that they'll leave you on a cliffhanger in the paragraph put an ad so right so right in the middle of she wasn't the type of person to run off there is an ad for a grinch hoodie for the for the holidays and then as you scroll past the ad but they were wrong <laughs> Well, you'd hope they know how to structure it. They've had 17 years to cook up this article. <laughs> yeah. 
Jennifer Wilbanks, then 32, was found three days later in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She claimed she had been kidnapped by a Latino man and a Caucasian woman while she was out for a run. She later recanted that harrowing story, admitting she'd actually fled Georgia on a bus because of personal issues. The wedding was called off and she and and fiance John Mason soon broke up. The case garnered international headlines and Will Banks was dubbed as the runaway bride. Will Banks was criminally charged for lying to police, eventually pleading guilty to a felony count of making a false statement and receiving two years of probation. 120 hours of community service and ongoing mental health counseling. A judge also ordered her to pay the sheriff's office $2,550 to cover some of the costs of searching for her, which this is too far. <laughs> That's, nah, no, because no. this is what I will say. As much money, as much money as the police waste not solving crime, you can't then just put the tab on the last person to get caught. You know what I mean? That's like when everybody's <laughs> speeding and they finally catch the person at the back of, like, at the caboose. And now that person is like, oh, well, you know, yeah. I got to give you an extra fast ticket because I couldn't catch the fastest guy. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. $2,550 is pitch and pennies. All right. It could have been an even $2,500. <laughs> I mean, that's also not much for. <laughs> Or making a potentially nationwide search for somebody and then you made it up. I mean, I get that. I, I understand that. And frankly, I'm surprised it wasn't more. Two thousand bucks, that's shit. I'll run away and fake my disappearance right now for two grand. That's you kidding me? That's wild. Okay, yeah. No, I'm with you. Fine, fine. She you make it like you made like a two hundred thousand, like shit. Man, don't do that. But now it's like shit. I might fake it tonight. But this is what bothers me. She also okay. agreed to pay $13,250 to the city of Duluth, uh, Georgia, to help pay for the overtime costs the city incurred searching for her, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. you you got to pay the sheriff specifically for their little 2500 And what's a 2500 for, really? Because you didn't find her. So whatever y'all were doing wasn't working. Feeding all them search dogs. Get them off as prime rib steaks, okay? I'm <laughs> Start I'm feeding them ever, like regular buy, dogs. I'm just saying, I got I got a dog with prescription food. You kidding me? That shit's expensive. Now make it a fleet of of working dogs. <laughs> a fleet, I don't think they call it a fleet, but. And uh, now, 16 years later, Will Banks is quietly living in Gainesville, Georgia, and working as an HR director. <laughs> At a telecommunication staffing agency where she has worked since 2015. You need to tell me she, all she, this. She's, she's in there as an HR person being like, listen, you can't run away from this conflict. And everyone being like, mm, mm, mm. Can't I? Can't I, though? I feel like I can at least for a couple days. Don't you think, Steph? She can at least never, you know, call someone out for calling in sick when they weren't sick that's that's yeah. what where it's like you gotta let it go Bro, you couldn't win an argument with your family ever again yeah because if she's ever just like well remember when you did then it'll be like you remember when you made us th thought you were kidnapped for three days yeah do you remember that and not to mention the wedding we fucking paid for not just three that days didn't happen three very important days you didn't just get kidnapped on a monday all right you pretend you to get kidnapped <laughs> While we were all gathered there to celebrate you. All gathered there with rented clothes. Yeah. And then we had to go searching for you. Nobody owned the pants they searched for you in. Yeah. No one no one had a search tuxedo. <laughs> no one's got one of those ready to go. And if you do, you're a murderer. Okay. If you, yes, if you do. If you do, you, you got bodies. Yeah. Um... Okay, Will Banks fell in love again in 2010, this time with Greg Hudson, who owned a landscaping company. The couple got married, but people has learned that they quietly divorced in April. According wait, to so they st wait, they still got married? No, this is a different guy. Oh, different guy. Yeah, okay. different guy. And, well, and when did they, not to go through all of her shit again, when did they get married? I'm sorry. They I got married the... in 2010. So it's like, you got okay. 10 years in there. That's not, right. that's not bad. Yeah. According to online court records, Greg Hudson filed for divorce in March in uncontested disillusion of the marriage. The mm. divorce was finalized 30 days later, and the couple's assets were divided. As for the runaway Damn, this, bride incident... This article is way too in their business. I really hope <laughs> that they never come... Like, th when you think about it, this is a regular person. Listeners. 
This is a regular person. <laughs> this is a regular person. And so the fact they went this deep on like a regular person is is wild. They can they can get in all of our shit. Mm-hmm. That's too much. That's too much. Even as I was Especially reading the other guy, it, he wasn't he wasn't even there from the runaway bride thing. He was just, he just showed up later. Yeah. <laughs> he, he showed up later, and then you know what? He didn't run away. He filed for divorce like a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he walked up to her and said, "I'm done." Yeah. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to say it to your face and save you the trouble mm-hmm. of thinking I've been kidnapped. Look, I'm not even wearing shoes, so you don't think I'm going to run anywhere. Mm-hmm. Barefoot telling you to your face, this isn't working between us. <laughs> yeah. Shame, man. What is? The, uh, like, I I can kind of, I've I, for years... On the like, I've only thought about this thing three times in life. One, when it was happening. Two, oh, this specific this story. specific story. Okay. One, when it was happening. Once, maybe in college when somebody mentioned it, because we were all kind of like, "Oh yeah, whatever happened with that, right?" Mm-hmm. And right now, and yeah, each, and I'd say that's one more than I've thought of it. Yeah. I didn't have the time in college. <laughs> Even thinking about it now, I can honestly say. I like I feel bad for anyone that feels the need to like just escape. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Just not deal with the thing and escape. But the way that you go about it is like it's so <laughs> like I don't know if there's a different scenario that that plays out like like unless they found you in Albuquerque. And you were like, well, they murdered me. So I I can't go back. I'm I'm dead. You're seeing a ghost right now. Like the fact that That'd be a bold move if someone showed up like <laughs> she that run up and you went, Ooh, yeah. avenge me. Yeah. Because because I don't know if you remember this, but they they went on like a wild goose chase for those two people for a little while. I mean I I'm assuming. I don't really remember the story that well. Yeah. But. So you can't. Oof. Well, and it, it does really depend, obviously, on the whole story. There's, you know, it, it depends the, you know, why she was running away. Was it, you know, a, 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 an abusive situation, something, blah, blah, blah. But then you do hear about people running away. I didn't mean to blah, 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 something that heavy. But I just meant like that right there. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, sometimes you don't know what to do, right? So you just panic. And you're like, I've gotten too close. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. But you do hear stories about people who do it. And it's like they just kind of decided last minute, like, I don't think I want to. And it, it's not like uh, they were held hostage. It was just they didn't check in really with themselves until like right before that always fascinates me yeah because of how you could be so like yeah. i don't know out of touch with yourself and then suddenly be like i don't want to do this yeah you know what i mean i know exactly because then you, you do and then the other end too you do have a, another person who's just like i don't what happened yeah yeah <laughs> Where, where'd they go and also it's like that that is the thing that sucks about that is that it's like even to what you said of like now people are going to maybe question you and be like, exactly. were you doing something to them? And it's like, no, nah, yeah. I was not doing anything. Yeah. I was letting them plan a wedding they clearly didn't want. <laughs> I was just loving them and supporting them and hoping they were going to be near me. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Like if that Again, we don't know the full story we don't. in that way. We don't. I mean, we might. People seems to have... <laughs> The I fucking mean, financial records. Look, I feel like if that's part of it, it'd been in there. I will say, if this if this dude that she ran from is in any way a bad man, there have been multiple years and opportunities and distance to be like, yeah, oh yeah, I was just running from him. That that yeah. I think people would would like identify with way more. Th- that would make sense. Yeah, I mean, you could understand that. And there's story, no reason but... to not throw him under the bus. You have you have national like attention mm-hmm. and you still made mm-hmm. up that a latino man kidnapped you yeah still had to go and blame someone else had to go blame blame a brown man is what you had to go do it was just it, it's it's very it's very like <laughs> I, julianne moore was in a movie exactly like this except she lost a kid like her kid went missing do you remember that yeah and she was yeah, like was, yeah i think somebody what? black took him <laughs> Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. 
Here's the thing. I went to a different Julianne Moore missing kid movie. No, she got like three. No, I know. The one you brought up was Freedom Land. Yeah, so there's right? Freedom Land. Which is based which is based on a true story. Yeah. I went with The Forgotten, which is where aliens take the kid. <laughs> like erase him from existence. Yeah. <laughs> and I was for a quick second of really trying to remember, was there a scene in that movie where Julianne Moore was just like, nah, some black kid, some black guy took my kid. <laughs> Yeah. And everyone's like, what kid? Because they disappeared him from existence. <laughs> and if that movie took that hard of a racial turn, mm-hmm. whoa, we'd yeah. still be talking about it today. <laughs> it's like, I feel like her and Jodie Foster cannot keep a hold of a kid in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Between the two of them. <laughs> it's just always some distress. Just like, yeah. what are you talking about? They were just, I, there's nothing that I love more than uh, like a, a movie night in and you're just chilling mm. but someone is screaming where's my family you know what i mean like someone on on the tv i'm hoping you mean. yeah 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 someone on okay. the tv is just <laughs> grabbing people and they're like my family you've met them why can't anyone tell me where yeah. my family is oh if you remember the movie uh ransom the mel gibson movie Mm-mm. uh oh you don't remember that one Mm-mm. Oh, okay, well, it's just his son gets taken, but it has one of the best lines to just yell. It's very pleasing to yell. Just go, give me back my son! It's so pleasing <laughs> to just shout. Did you ever see... Try it, try it, try it, give me back my son right now. Uh, Give, give me back my son. That, come on. Nah, I don't want him. You didn't even try, you coward. I, I don't want him. Uh, I really love uh, the... Halle Berry By the movie. Way, feel free to leave five star reviews that just says "Give me back my son." <laughs> <laughs> it's my terrible call to action. Um, did you ever see the trailer for that Halle Berry movie where she like? I guess she works at. I'm mixing up Halle Berry movies now, but I think she works at a like a crisis center. But then someone she's kidnaps her kid. Woman? I don't know if I think you're mixing up too, because I think the one in the crisis center, it's not someone takes her kid. I think someone gets her on hold and like there's someone who's being kidnapped. Oh, I see. OK. And so she does. I, I don't Is that called crisis? I'm not sure what that's called. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called, but I have no idea. The thing that's very funny in that trailer is like Sally and I laugh about it all the time where <sighs> she corners one of the people and she's like, you took the wrong kid. <laughs> <laughs> as if there would have been a kid she'd have been fine with them yeah, taking as, as, like there's a kid that's like i right, nobody really likes uh, tyson no. anyway so <laughs> yeah you're taking tyson i i, I wouldn't have really cared you I'd took have up, the but I wrong have cared. kid <laughs> <laughs> oh man mm-hmm. wow we went on some turns there yeah yeah i i don't even know I don't I don't even know where I where all that came from. I mean, I wanted to tell you about the salon thing for a little while, but you mentioned uh like magazines and stuff at uh at the salons. Did you guys do you remember highlights? Did you ever have highlights? I didn't get the like the the fun ones? No, I just didn't get the boner for highlights that everyone else had. Like I was just like, all right, it's there. It did not do right. it for me at all. I think it's like to me it was just it was the closest thing to like a kids like magazine or workbook. You know what? You know, when when you're waiting for your mom to get her hair done or whatever, then it's like, all right, I can do a I can do a you know a, a picture search thing. You know, this is what happened. This is this. Then some I'll, some kid would always have them fucking circled in like pen or crayon, I'll and he ruined the fucking yeah. highlights. Sorry, that's that's what would happen. So. I went to, the, I would go to the doctor. I'd only ever see highlights at the doctor. I never saw them anywhere else, like no mm. salons or like barbershops or anything like that. So right. I'd only see highlights at the doctor's office. And they were like, we had a lot of sick kids where I'm from. And so they were well worn <laughs> by the time it got to me. That's probably why I didn't that like was, them. Every, that is a loaded statement. Well, look, we had a just lot like, of sick kids. All the puzzles were done. Like it was just, it was nothing. It was like we had a lot of. Where'd you fucking live, Chernobyl? Like we had a lot of sick kids. I remember one time. Uh, one time this is this was like on, in retrospect, this was very dumb of them because uh, I was really little and I remember. This is so bad. I, I feel I still feel bad about this when I think about it. 
um, I was still a very small child, but I specifically remember this time I went to the doctor's office and there was a kid that was noticeably younger than me crying. And uh, the kid was crying because the kid was going to need a shot. And whether it had never had a shot before or it had only had one shot and was really painful and memorable, the kid was already crying about having to get a shot, right? Okay. And so then the parent looked at me and was like, you know, tell tell her getting a shot's not that bad. Uh, and I was like, yeah. It's like, like I was trying to repeat the thing of like, yeah, it's it's not that bad. Like it's it's okay, right? And mm. she stopped. She slightly stopped crying a little bit, uh, and then looked at me. And the the, <laughs> the mom was just like, like, like trying to get me to vamp about how shots weren't that bad. But I don't know because I'm also <laughs> like a kid, so I don't know what else to say. Like the first thing I said was just repeating what you said, you know. Mm-hmm. And so then she's like, she's like. And and so I I was like yeah um it it's quick and it's over you know really fast and she's like really and I was like yeah yeah I have to get them sometimes like for medicine or like I just start talking right but now right. she stopped crying so now the the mom is just like nodding and smiling and everything and uh, and then I can't remember what I said but out of nowhere I was just like. Yeah, and I mean, the last shot I got, the needle was only this big. And like, I have no, like, I have no... For the listener, Josh held up a very wide space between his fingers. Yeah, I, I just held up my fingers further than my head is apart. <laughs> Which, if you're a little kid, would, like, go through your arm. Yeah, yeah. And so, And so then... I was just like, yeah, it's only like this big. And her eyes got wide and she freaked out and started screaming and crying Ugh. more than she was before. And the mom, like, she she wasn't rude or anything, but she looked at me like, you were doing so well until that last thing. Which is Didn't also like... the landing there. Which is like, I just let it weigh on me. Because even my mom then jumped in and was like, like, <laughs> I think she put her hand over my mouth or something. Like... <laughs> But I'm like, why was this my job? I don't even know this kid. <laughs> Yo, why is the bedside manner on me? I don't work here. I was like, I was low key furious about it because I was just like, what? What do I? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird to put that on you. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was horrible. I still yeah. think about it sometimes. Anytime I see like a little kid cry in public, I'm like, oh, I did that once. Like I made that happen to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I one time was in, they were trying to get, I don't know if it was like a checkup or if I was sick with something, they were doing blood work. I don't remember exactly why I was there. Oh, I think I was, I think I had like strep throat or something. I think I was pretty sick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so they had to take a blood sample, but I was so dehydrated they couldn't get enough blood out of me. <laughs> they couldn't, so they had to Mm-mm. they had to stick me Mm-mm. like eight Mm-mm. times. <laughs> they had to do like several Mm-mm. times in both Mm-mm. arms, and no, then they had to go. No, they had to, they had to no, go to the no, no, they had to go to no. the veins in my hand. <laughs> he took his headphones out. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I'm done. I'm done. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Took me a long time to come back from that. I <laughs> I had a I had a grudge against the doctors for a while. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> That's real messed up. <laughs> you gotta stay hydrated, kids. That's the lesson there. 
one time while well, when I was at the doctor, I was still like relatively young, but I wasn't little anymore. I was maybe like early teens. And mm-hmm. and it's just funny because when you're when you're a young teenager, you're getting to see older teenagers, which feel like grownups to you and then younger kids, right. which feel like yeah. itty bitty children to you. Right. So mm-hmm. like you feel you actually I don't know how to describe this exactly, but when you were like 13 and 14, you mm-hmm. have this feeling in life that you actually don't have again until your 20s. Where when you're in your 20s, people in their 30s seem like real adults to you. And then anyone younger than you seems like a little kid to you. Yeah. Like all over again, which is crazy. That's a good point. Because you feel that when you're like early teens, you're like, I'm not a baby. Give me some responsibility. Or like, don't talk to me like that. I'm not a little kid. But then you see Mm -hmm. like someone who can vote or drink and you're like, wow, they're like a grown up. You know what I mean? Right. And then you're 22 and you're like... I can vote. I can drink. Don't don't come at me like that. And then you see someone who has their own apartment, and you're like, "Wow, you're a real grown up." You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And and I remember I went to the doctor's office. I was like 13, 14, and this little kid was wilding so hard. Okay, that he they I think they needed to give him a shot or something, and they the door to the office wasn't all the way closed. So as I'm passing by, I see them like struggling with this kid. And right, right as the doctor was like about to give him the shot, the kid wiggled just right and got a foot loose from the nurse and like, not even intentionally, but kicked the doctor (laughs) right in the balls. Occupational hazard, man. (laughs) And so he stumbled back and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he gave himself the shot because (laughs) the way he had to grab his balls. After he got hit, he still had the syringe in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that dude got kicked in the balls and a shot of penicillin at the same time. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, God damn. Yeah. I hate I hate it so much going to the doctor. I would like. Mm-hmm. I, I like I think I even told my mom one time I was like just let me be sick <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> just let me be sick like we really we really don't need to be wasting the money like mm-hmm. I'm not that sick you know right <laughs> just come on just let me sniffle it out like <laughs> don't do this because you're gonna ruin my whole day yeah because it always became a like it always took up your entire day because you got there you had to wait even though you had an appointment Mm -hmm. and then you had to go pick up the prescription which was never like on time right because the doctor would tell you like oh yeah this usually takes 30 minutes to fill so you can probably leave right from here we're gonna we're gonna put it in now and you can just go yeah. there and it should be ready. And that never happened because they don't work at the pharmacy. So they don't always know what they're talking about. So then you get to the pharmacy and they just have the attitude of like, why would it be ready? <laughs> like, who are you? Yeah. You someone important in this town? Yeah. Why would I have this ready for you? No, it doesn't make any sense. Why would this be ready? Yeah. And then, you know. You know, and I, I hate going to the the doctor too. I softened on the doctor as I got older because I had to start going to the orthodontist because I, I had braces. Mm-hmm. And those were always long appointments, always annoying. And then like even you going for the routine ones, you're getting like the rubber bands replaced, like you're getting your braces like tightened and stuff, which was just an infuriating experience. And anyone who had braces knows like it's an uncomfortable experience. Even at its, at its smoothest, there's still just a guy in your mouth for a while, like basically punching you in the teeth with a little rubber band pliers thing. Uh, so that became, for some reason, then the doctor, I, I got less worried about going to the doctor because I'm like, well, at least I'm just not in the chair just having the kajunk junk in my face all day. I never, I always wanted braces and I never got them. So I never really. You wanted them? Yeah. Yeah. I was very worried that my teeth were starting to be crooked when I was a like early teens and oh, really? luckily they didn't like luckily it never happened but i remember i went to the dentist one time and they were like 
oh yeah, your back, it was like something in the back of my mouth where they were like, it's starting to curve a little, so we'll want to watch out for that. And I was just like, do I need braces or something? <laughs> my dentist, <laughs> this is wild. I don't know if this makes him like an honest man or if he was just this nonchalant because he didn't care, but he, I asked him if I needed braces and he was like, couldn't hurt. <laughs> I mean, and I get what he meant, but I was just like, right. I asked you a yes or no question based off something you just told me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we eventually had to just tell the orthodontist to take them off because I had them on for too long. And like, well, so have I not told you this before? I swear you, we've talked about this before. Maybe we talked. I don't remember you telling me this. Okay, because I had you're supposed to have like braces on average for like three years at most. You want like two year, two to three years is like ideal, unless you're like teeth are really fucked up. And mine were pretty fucked up. I had pretty fucked up teeth because I had so I had to have. <laughs> I mean, I had to have I had to have dental surgery when I was like eleven or twelve because I had teeth coming in under other like I had extra <laughs> teeth in my head just coming in at like wild <laughs> angles and underneath I had one that was coming in underneath my some of my bottom teeth there was one coming in like sideways just <laughs> just my teeth <laughs> I had a bunch coming in just all wrong your teeth were weeds. <laughs> kind of so they had to do oh surgery just gosh. to like get some because if, if some of those would have come in it would have just completely messed up like any of my teeth <laughs> so we basically had to have surgery for them to go in and like take out the extra teeth like i just had too many teeth in my head this is insane we've definitely never talked about this you never <laughs> said these words to me or else i would have remembered it this is insane <laughs> But so I had to have, so I had to have surgery. I had dental surgery <laughs> when I was coming into my head, coming in my head and coming in wrong. It wasn't just that there was too many; they were all doing teeth wrong. Oh, <laughs> but so man. I had to have, so I had to have surgery to get teeth removed. That was my first time like dealing with anesthetic and stuff like that. Like That's that was so that was a wild. Trip. I wonder if teeth talk. Like I wonder if teeth are just like <laughs> excuse hey, me. Ex this is the direction you're taking. Yeah, this? I wonder if teeth are like, hey, you gotta get in this mouth because this mouth be eating all the good stuff. This is this is, this is the place to be. And so <laughs> then more teeth try to join the party, and then it becomes that house party where you're like, how do I know you? You don't need to leave. <laughs> what yeah okay they also i don't i can't believe they told me this because again i'm like 11 mm -hmm. but and i know they gotta tell the risks but like tell my parents don't tell me i'm a kid what am i gonna do except for freak out but they straight up told me that one of the teeth they were taking out was next to an artery and they're like yeah if we hit that that'll be really bad and i'm like why would you even as a kid i was like why tell me that I can't do anything. There's no papers for me to sign. I'm 11. Like, what are you doing? But it was fine. Uh, but then I had to get braces and I, to <laughs> to sort out the remaining teeth. Yeah, and, they just to uh, fence them up to put them in line. No more parties. Yeah. Fun's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and like, braces really helped. Made my teeth way better because like i had like some like my back teeth like weren't touching right like my like my mouth was messed up as a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't like really remember it but when i think of the reason why I had the surgery I'm I'm like man my teeth must have been screwed i just think about your teeth clapping <laughs> <laughs> i think i had teeth coming in behind like other teeth yeah on, that's like, what one i of my mean rows. it's like, like yeah your teeth were trying to take a <laughs> Family photo. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find their window. They were like, oh, oh. <laughs> it was like I had two sets of adult teeth coming in. Like I just because these were all my like my adult teeth coming in. These weren't baby teeth still. Okay. This is this is the darkest scenario. You may need to cut yeah. this. Okay. Do you know yeah. if maybe yeah. you're a twin? Because <laughs> maybe you ever hear about those people? You ever hear about those people that absorb their twin? 
<laughs> That's why I have extra teeth. I think that might be your twin that, trying to bite your mouth. <laughs> Is that I absorbed a twin? It's possible. There are twins on both sides of my family. Yeah, I think that maybe, maybe. you're a twin, and that's the They're twin supposed to be was four Nielsen boys, but trying to bite. You know what I mean? Like was trying to like, I mean, hey, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've always been a performer. I don't like to share the spotlights. So. Yeah, yeah. So you went ahead, and sucked up all the oh. nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> Give me them teeth. No, but I, then I had braces for, yeah, like four years. And it got to the point to where they were then, because like I still don't have the the gaps in my top and bottom rows of teeth. The, the gaps don't line up perfectly. Mm-hmm. And that was like the last thing the orthodontist was working on. But how he wanted me to do that, and I think I've talked about this before on the show, but he wanted me to have a rubber band that ran diagonal across my mouth. So it went from this tooth up here to over here and was just so i just couldn't like really talk and you couldn't eat i mean you'd have to take it out and whatever but they just wanted me to be having a rubber band just across my mouth at all times which just felt weird because then it's just pulling your jaw over now and then eventually we literally just went to the orthodontist and my mom was like okay we're just listen where we started and where we're at now, way better. Because before this kid's mouth was fucked. So let's just let's just call it a game. Let's quit while we're ahead and let's take this sucker off. Because braces are expensive too. And we had them on for like an extra year than we needed. And I understand that braces are expensive. So I'm not asking this question in like sure. a sarcastic way. But yeah. you get the braces. You can't like you you can't rent them or anything. Right. So like once you have them on, they're yours. Right. Like, does it cost I mean, more your... to have them on longer than a shorter amount of time? The the upkeep to go and oh, have them because t- you have to get them. You have to get them tightened all the time. You have to replace their bands. I mean, now I think braces, even just in the time since I've had them, have gotten way more simpler. But because they glue them onto your teeth and stuff, too. So the way they take them off is they just break them. I heard that. I heard yeah, about they just that. Go, that was an uncomfortable experience. They just go in and they just basically twist them all and just pop them off your teeth, which seems like, I don't know, seems like a real goal line stand by the teeth at that You know what I mean? How's the glue like, hey, fare? Huh? How's the glue fare when they pop them off? Just snaps. Just cracks off like the way they do it. I think they, I think they did something to like weaken it, but then they just have to like pop them all off when they. Because I had all the old metal brackets. Like now they, I think, kids have them slightly different. Mm-hmm. My dad, when he was a kid, that was when they used to have to individually put a metal thing around every tooth. I remember uh, in when I was in high school. I think I only ever met two kids who had headgear because headgear was going out of style. Like we finally advanced past headgear. Yeah. They kind of learned how to do but it in mouth. But it's so funny to think that they used to they used to be like, "There's no way to fix your teeth without the back of your head having something to do with it." Like, like if we want to, <laughs> if we want to fix this tooth, we gonna have to start from the hairline down. All right, <laughs> you know, because the way that we used to do things is not as good as we do them now, which yeah. is why we stream, I asked we streamline. that question about keeping records, okay? I feel like the records can't possibly <laughs> have been as good back then <laughs> as they are now. I will I, I will admit they have probably gotten better. Uh-huh. But there's some things that we just we did we just wrote down. I don't know. Mhm. You want to open the mailbag? <laughs> let's open the mailbag. <laughs> let's get, let's get out of here. Uh, let's read a couple of reviews on Apple Podcasts. Uh, the title of this one is by John Deere Spoker Model D, and the title is "The Battle of Situational Is on the Line." I have never, all caps, I have never had a continuous smirk on my face in a long time. To be able to determine to determine who could have captured my heart, I need to see Joshi perform in person. I pride myself as an aficionado of comedy contact sport. I propose. <laughs> I pr- 
I propose a cage match between Paula Poundstone and Josh Johnson. <laughs> Porsche gliders or cats must be prohibited in order to guarantee a fair fight. What's a porch glider? I don't know. Is that one of those like hang gliders you like sit in? I think maybe. Oh, it sounds racist. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> uh, to guarantee a fair fight, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. I just want to see what, what that is. Oh, it's just a, it's just a porch swing. Oh, I forget. Okay, the, but the ones, the, not the ones that like hang from the ceiling, but yeah, the, ones the ones that, that just that... have the like kind of rocking chair no, with motion. You. Yeah, thing. yeah. Okay, I didn't realize people called those gliders. gliders yeah. I guess. Now. One love the idea of you fighting Paula Poundstone. Nothing against her, but uh, what an event that would be! I'd pay. I'd pay <laughs> yeah, I paid Direct TV money for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how the how the porch swing or the cats come into play, but they also must be prohibited. So for some reason, these two things aren't allowed. I mean, this person clearly thinks I would break a porch glider over Paula Poundstone's head. <laughs> Hitting her and her cats. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you for that uh, comment, John Deere Spoker Model D. Uh, and then this one here, this is from, oh, they've listed their name as I Choose Privacy. Which is great because then in the review they immediately say their name. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I choose privacy and the title of this five star review is episode idea uh, hey y'all my name is Emma and I love the show anyway you should do an episode on Karen's Karen's okay okay we'll put that in the bag we may have to yeah, I mean, that, look up some that, I feel like there's plenty of fodder there oh yeah. yeah I think there's plenty of stories we can find on that situation yeah so <laughs> I choose privacy. Hey, my name's Emma. <laughs> I love that turn of events. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for listening to The Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, where we're going to be posting clips of the show. And if you are looking for Logan... You can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen if you want to get into our mailbag. There's two ways to do it. You can send us uh, an email, joshjohnsonshow at gmail.com, uh, or you can do like those people there and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Um, and then coming up this Saturday, there are two things happening. Uh, one, there is our last virtual live show of the year. Uh, so ticket link will be down below. I believe that's 6 p.m. Eastern time over Zoom. Uh, they've been really fun to do all year. So come join us for the, the, the I was about to say kickoff, but send off of 2022. Uh, and then also, speaking of the send-off of 2022, uh, this Saturday I will close the submissions for the best of 2022 episodes. I'm going to close that this Saturday evening, 11.59 p.m., I guess probably central time because that's that's when it is for me. Um, but so if you still want to get in your choices of your favorite episodes and your favorite moments of the year, you have until the Saturday after this episode comes out uh, to submit them. We've already got uh, some suggestions and some episodes I'd forgotten about being uh, submitted as as favorites, which I'm excited about. It's going to be fun to go through those clips. So we'll be making those uh, episodes, I mean, probably after Saturday. Yeah, sounds good. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you all so much. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the day and an incredible weekend. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Hit the bell notification because apparently it's the only way YouTube will tell you that something happened. And just tell a friend. That's the biggest thing you could do. Just tell one person in your life that you like, maybe you don't like, that this video happened to you. We release the podcast every Thursday on all the podcast apps, so you should find us there and subscribe on those and comment and leave reviews and whatever on all of them. And also, if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and videos and stuff there, and uh, we'd love to see you.